Hello there! This video is going to prove to you that you can make any project into a quilting project. I've said it before, if you don't have time or the inclination or the resources to make large quilts all the time but you love to quilt, there are so many things you can turn into a quilting project. So this is one of those small quilt projects today and it's a quilt as you go project, meaning you don't actually have to do the top stitching part of the quilt. So that's what we're going to learn today. I'm Nikki, this is Pin Cut Sew and we're going to jump right into it. So baby bibs are something that I like to have around, not just bibs, but gifts, baby gifts of all kinds. I like to have them in both genders and gender neutral just around because I inevitably get invited to a baby shower. I love baby showers and I love to give something handmade at them. And the bib is one of my very favorite things. This is actually a pattern that's been on my website since the very beginning of Pin Cut Sew. So you can go over and grab the bib template for free, or you can grab the entire printable tutorial from my shop for a few dollars, and this will tell you how to make a baby bib like this. But today, I or recently, I decided I wanted to kind of turn this bib into a quilted baby project, and it turned out so cute. And so we're gonna learn how to make this today. A quilt as you go project just means that you are including the batting in as you sew the top together or sew the little block together. People do use this method to make large quilts. I've never done that, but I really love it for small projects like these. And so therefore you just put it back on it and you don't have to top stitch everything and you don't have to do the binding or anything like that. It's already quilted for you. So it really saves you an extra step. It also allows for some more precision, I think, and it just saves time. Also, it's just really fun. So today we're gonna make this log cabin baby bib. I also made this crazy quilted baby bib, and I thought about doing a tutorial for both of these things, but then I also made a crazy quilted pumpkin <laughs> coaster. And I think what I need to do is make a whole video about crazy quilting. Crazy quilting, I feel like is kind of the OG quilt as you go technique. So anyway, I have modernized it just a little bit and look for this video coming soon. So let's see, I'm gonna tell you what you need and then we will get started. Oh, but make sure you go grab the pattern, either just the template or the entire um, instructions, which do have a video to go along with them. One of my very first ones. I'm not going to rewatch it because I will probably be embarrassed by it. Don't forget your Starbucks. Okay, for this project, you're going to need the pattern, like I said, in order to get the entire square block on my baby bib, I did extend this pattern by an inch and a half. So you just cut it. This is the slash and spread line so that you can make the bib larger. There's instructions for that with the printable version or in the video too. But you can make it a little bit longer by just adding a piece of paper in here or just pinning it an inch and a half apart. I made one without doing that and it looked it looked weird. It looked unfinished because I didn't have this band at the bottom. And then you're going to need some fabrics. You really don't need very many at all. I just cut some one and a half inch strips and then you're going to need something for the very middle. So I liked this little bear on a bicycle. I'm going to use him for the middle. And then you just need one and a half inch strips of fabrics to make your log cabin block, which is what we're going to make for this one. But you could, you can really make any block into a bib. And then you need this one, I had the purple, this one I'm gonna use the green for the border. And then I'm gonna back it with this because I don't think I have enough of the green, we'll see. And then also you'll need some batting. For this, I really like the warm and natural cotton batting. It just feels substantial enough. Gosh, I'm a mess. Let me move some stuff. <laughs> the warm and natural cotton batting is substantially thicker than some other flimsier battings. And I like that to work with with quilt as you go projects because it's not gonna be shifty and stretchy. Some battings really stretch. Now let me put these aside. Oh, and then also you're gonna need some kind of clasp for the bib, but I'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to cut a piece of batting. I love it when I have batting scraps, big enough for my entire bib. So let's see. Make sure it's just a little bit larger. Then I'm going to sort of gauge where my center square needs to be. And then I can move my bib pattern. You just make sure it's big enough. Then I can move my bib pattern. So here's where my center square is. I'm going to arrange the entire bib on this piece of batting. So to make a log cabin block, you just start sewing strips 
onto each side as you go. So first I'm going to put this little guy here. I'm going to cut it to size. And I'm just going to take this over to my machine. I have a walking foot attached, but you don't need a walking foot attached. And I'm gonna go stitch a quarter inch seam here. Okay, I have sewn this strip and now I'm just going to open it up and press it. Okay, so now I have this. Now I'm gonna take my next one and a half inch strip and I'm gonna go in this direction. So I'm gonna go clockwise. So I'm going to put this one so that it covers my edge here and it keeps covering the piece I already sewed on. I will cut it to size a little bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. And now I'm gonna go sew this one on. Okay, so I have two strips added now and I'm going to continue adding strips until my whole piece measures, I think, let's see, five inches. So I'm making a five inch square. But if you just keep adding your one and a half inch strips as you go around clockwise, then you will end up with a five inch square. And the reason it's called quilt as you go is because we are sewing it directly onto the batting. So the batting and the fabrics are attached to each other without you having to go back later and quilt it. That's sure something I could use. In order to get it straight, I'm mostly lining it up with the part that I know is straight already, which is my center square. That way you don't have to be super particular about the rest of it. And then once it gets a little bit bigger, I do like to put a pin there. Could you All right, so each side has two fabrics added. I just need one more on the top. Man, I think I'm gonna use the black and white again. All right, so my center square is done, but now I need to make my piece big enough to be turned into a bib. So I'm going to add, I'm gonna add I think an inch and a half strip on the bottom, I'm gonna cut out of my border fabric, one inch and a half strip, and then I think I'll go ahead and cut two and a half inch strips, maybe three inch strips to put on the sides so that I can make sure it's plenty big. So this is a fat quarter. All right, I might as well just make two inches for the bottom. Just wanna make sure it's plenty big. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one here. And then I'll stop sewing. Maybe I'll just go ahead and trim it. Doesn't need to be perfect. And I'm gonna put this one over here. So now I am making a piece of fabric basically large enough to cut my bib pattern out of. So I'm gonna go stitch these on. Okay, and then I'm going to sew my two inch strip all the way across the bottom. I'm going to line it up with the parts I know are straight. So this darker fabric here, I'm going to go sew this strip across the bottom. Okay, so now I need to cover the top portion of this batting so that I make sure I can cut my whole bib piece out of it. I only need about this much. Okay, let me make one of these edges straight. And then I'll go stitch this across the top. And I'll go stitch that. Okay, I might actually be able to back it with that. I'm not sure. Before we go on, let me give you a couple of tips. If your machine had trouble with the batting on the back without having any backing there, like maybe your machine tried to eat the batting a little bit, you can just put like a layer of muslin fabric or th thin cotton under here and make like a quilt sandwich and that will kind of help with that problem. Okay, so now we're simply going to cut our bib pattern out. Here's my altered bib pattern where I put an inch and a half inside of it. Is this the right one? No, it's this one. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to fold this in the center. I can tell where the center is because I'm just gonna fold my little one and a half inch square, well now it's one inch, in half and kind of just make sure that I'm, see I can line up my stitches back here. 
I just want it to be folded in half. You can press it if you want to. I'm not going to. And then I'm just going to place my bib pattern on it. I will pin it on and then I will cut it out. And now I have my bib shape cut out. Now I'm not going to cut my backing out the same way because this already has some bulk to it. If I cut this out of just a single layer, they might just be slightly different sizes. So instead, I'm gonna show you what I will do. I'm going to cut off a big enough square of this fabric. I'm going to put my bib face down on it and cut around. I'm going to iron it even though I don't feel like it. And I'm going to put my bib face down onto it and pin all the way around my bib piece. I'm going to sew it on like this before I cut it. When I taught sewing to kids, we used this method a lot because it helped them, you know, when you're sewing two pieces together, it's difficult sometimes to get the edges matched up and they would have holes. And so we called this the stitch or the sew then cut method. <laughs> So if you want to attach a walking foot to your machine for this step, if you have trouble with it bunching and shifting because it's thick, then a walking foot will help with that. I have a whole video on the walking foot, how to install it, what it's for, how to use it, why it's amazing and you need one. <laughs> but I have had fine luck with just using my regular presser foot, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, I'm gonna leave open this opening right down here. And I'm just gonna go sew from here all the way around to here with a quarter inch seam. Okay, now I'm going to cut it out. I'm just cutting the lining off around the lines. I'm going to trim my corners and trim the batting away around those smaller pieces. All right, and then whenever you have an inside curve, you want to make clips, not through your stitches, just up close to them so that things lay nice and flat when you turn it right side out. Okay, so I have my corners trimmed close and my clips in my curve. Now I'm going to reach inside in between the bib front and the backing. I'm going to turn it right side out. Okay, I'm going to go warm up my big iron and I'm going to press this nice and flat. Getting all my edges out so they're nice and neat. And I'm going to press this opening under as if I had sewn it. All right, my big iron was in a bad mood and it's spit up everywhere. All right, I'm gonna put a couple pins here and I'm gonna go top stitch around the entire edge of the bib an eighth of an inch away from the edges. Super cute so far. Okay, look how cute. So I have a favorite way to do the closure on these, and that is, gosh, my unsophisticated storage system in this plastic baggie. This is called a cam snap plier set. So it comes with these pliers. I've had these for probably a decade. I will link you to these. I've also demonstrated these on my one of my videos. I think it's called Obscure Sewing Tools I Couldn't Live Without. <laughs> This is one of them, super handy. They're good for doll clothes, Barbie clothes, baby clothes. I think they were originally intended for baby cloth diapers, but I use them on all kinds of stuff. If you do not have this, you can use a sew on snap or you can use a Velcro dot and just sew it on in an X. But I like these. Here's what you do. You put a hole through one side, decide which one's gonna be the top. So this is gonna be my one on the bottom. You put the other side here and you squeeze with all your might. The harder you squeeze, the easier the snap will be to open and close. So if you have pain in your hands, 
you may have to have someone else do it. <laughs> and the other one goes the other direction. So this blank one will go on the top and then the female piece goes here. And squeezy, squeeze, squeeze. There you have it. Completed baby bib. Now I have a girl one and a boy one. All right, my completed baby bib. Make sure you stay tuned for the crazy quilting tutorial. This one is really cute. I think for that tutorial, I'll make another one of these pumpkins. Um, if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and to let me know in the comments what you like to make for baby gifts because I'm always on the hunt for more baby shower gift ideas or just not necessarily showers, just any baby gift. <laughs> I think that's all. So yeah, go grab your pattern, start making some baby bibs and please show me what you make and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss the next tutorial or pep talk. I'll see you soon, bye. My sewing scissors have the squeaks. I don't know what to do about that. My husband would say WD-40. <laughs> Sometimes I like to even give a gift when the baby is... No, never mind. Don't put that in there, Layla. <laughs>